In today's video, I'll be looking at the Canon Rebel T7. The Canon Rebel T7 is one of Canon's most inexpensive DSLRs. While its older sibling, the Canon Rebel T6, is still on sale, the T7 brings a modest improvement in the number of megapixels, coming in at 24 megapixels versus the T6's older 18 megapixel sensor. Obviously, megapixels aren't everything, so I'll let you know which of these cameras I'd recommend at the end of the video. I'll also compare it to some similar priced cameras like the Nikon D3500 and give you my recommendations on which camera would work best for you. On the outside, very little has changed. A few years ago, I had reviewed the Rebel T5 and the T7 has really changed very little since. As I just mentioned, it hides a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor behind its kit 18 to 55 millimeter non-STM lens. The body is built like almost any other Rebel DSLR. It's sturdy and very comfortable to handle. However, it isn't by any means as compact as the Canon SL2 or the Nikon D3500. However, it isn't unusually bulky or heavy either. The buttons on the camera are also laid out like any other Rebel camera with the shutter button, the mode dial, the on-off button, and the adjuster dials on top. The only notable difference is the flash button, which is now on the top face. There's also a really useful hot shoe on the top face and Canon's standard pop-up flash. The rear face also has very few surprises and little seems to have changed on the Canon T7. Everything is exactly where you'd expect to find it. The 3-inch non-touch LCD doesn't flip or articulate, but is decent enough to view pictures and change menu settings. The menus are also standard Canon menus that are pretty easy to navigate. Autofocus using the screen though is a whole different story. More about that in a minute. The battery and SD card are in this compartment on the bottom, as is the case with a lot of cheaper DSLRs. Rather pleasantly, Canon provides a standalone battery charger to charge the battery. That way you can buy replacements and swap the battery out while your depleted battery charges up. And as expected, the T7 can also mount to a tripod if needed. When I tested the Rebel T5 a few years ago, I found the autofocus in live view mode to be painfully slow. And sadly, that hasn't changed much on the T7. The autofocus is unusually slow and often inaccurate when you use the screen to autofocus. And this isn't really unique to the Canon T7, several entry-level DSLRs struggle with autofocus in the live view mode, as I found in my review of the Nikon D3500. And the only way to get around this is to use the optical viewfinder, which does improve the autofocus quite a bit. However, when you are able to lock focus on your subject, the pictures it takes are extremely well exposed, sharp, and have an overall pleasing aesthetic to them. Very similar to most Canon Rebel DSLRs, all these images were taken with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens with the camera in the fully automatic mode, something a beginner is likely to use. The low light shots are also decent, but the optical viewfinder isn't much use in the dark and the autofocus doesn't make it easy. The Rebel T7 can also shoot full HD video at 24 and 30 FPS. The video quality is acceptable, but again, the autofocus makes it hard to lock focus on your subject quickly and accurately. So getting the right shot is a bit challenging. It does work reasonably well for things like interviews where there's quite a bit of contrast between the subject and the background. And there is no microphone jack, in case you're wondering, so you're stuck with the audio from the built-in mic. The camera does come equipped with Wi-Fi, which allows you to connect the T7 to a phone or tablet and transfer pictures, which is great if you need to quickly post pictures on social media when you're out of your house. And usually the Canon camera app is pretty glitchy on most cameras that I've tested. However, on the T7, it worked flawlessly and even allowed me to control the T7 remotely from my phone. So should you get the Canon Rebel T7? Well, that depends on a few things. For example, if you're able to get it at a substantial discount off its list price and a fine just shooting photos using its optical viewfinder, the T7 can be a decent starter DSLR. However, if you're just starting out in photography and really don't want to invest much in the hobby, the cheaper Rebel T6 is also a decent option. Another good option for folks on a tight budget is the Nikon D3500, which performs somewhat similarly and sells for almost the same price as the Rebel T6. 
feel free to check out my full review of that camera. However, if you really want to get into photography and need a camera that grows with you, I would recommend the slightly more expensive Canon SL2. The SL2's better autofocus system and articulating screen make for a much better camera that grows with your skill level. And if you're looking for a camera to primarily shoot video, I recommend the fantastic Panasonic G7. I'll leave links to all these cameras right below the video in case you're looking to buy one. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.